Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, M. Stuart Paintings. On today's landscape acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to paint this gorgeous flower field scene. I'm going to teach you how to blend a realistic sky. I'm going to teach you how to create realistic clouds with highlights and shadow tones. I'm going to teach you how to push things back since as mountains and trees and foliage and how to create realistic grass and wild flowers using things like a fan brush so you can paint at home this really easy beginners landscape painting so let's get into it So it's a real easy tutorial today, we're going to use the following colours, they are white, yellow, brown, green, purple, cerulean blue, cobalt blue and black. Now I have a A3 canvas that I've done about two thirds sky and about one third um, of this sort of field that we're going to have on our horizon here, we're going to have some wild flowers, we're going to have just about here, just where it ends and we're going to have two thirds being the sky and all I've done is I've painted my canvas burnt sienna and used chalk for an outline. So we're going to have a light effect on our sky with really radiant clouds, we're going to have a far off mountain and we're going to have some little tree line and a bit near a tree line coming towards the viewer and then we're just going to create a little path and we're just going to create some wild flowers just to make it look more realistic and bring it towards the viewer. So if you like to jot down the outline feel free to and away we'll go. So we're going to start with the sky, we're going to start furthest back and we're going to create a lovely royal blue. To make royal blue all you do is take cobalt blue and cerulean blue and mix the two together and you get that gorgeous sort of electric royal blue. And to make a really light shade you just take a tiny bit of cerulean blue, a tiny bit of cobalt blue, lots and lots of white and a dot of black and you get the lighter shade. So we've got two shades. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the lightest shade at the horizon. So all we're going to do we're just going to block in our painting so again don't worry if it's scruffy and all we're going to do is around the horizon where the sky is the lightest at tone and around our sun because obviously the sun is that really bright white light we're just going to block in with that really pastel light blue now sorry everyone if I've been away and I've only done one video in the last six weeks. I've had a horrible experience where I've had a trapped nerve in my neck which has been going down my back so I've been really really uncomfortable and hardly been able to sit and stuff so that's why I've been away but I have been seen by a lovely physio and a lovely chiropractor who have been really helping me and popped me back into shape so I'm feeling a lot better. So today's my first painting in literally a month and a half so thank you for bearing with me and thank you for all supporting the channel. So we're going to take some of that lovely um, royal blue which is cerulean blue and cobalt blue mixed together and we're just going to darken up our corners. Now don't worry if the two tones don't blend at all, we just want to block it in, we just want to get a base layer to cover up that burnt sienna. Now you don't have to paint your canvas burnt sienna, everyone asks me that, I just do it because I've always done it and it just helps me because acrylics unlike oil paints are really thin and it just shows me where I need to rework areas because the brown shines through and you can see all the sort of streaks, look you can see all the streaks in the canvas. So if you dry it with a hair dryer and what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to blend, okay? So what we're going to do, we're just going to put an extra coat just because obviously it's a bit streaky and all we're going to do is we're going to mix the two tones together to create sort of a middle tone. So we've got this middle tone between the light shade and the dark shade and we're just going to sort of darken up the corners because if you think of the lights in the middle and we want to just emphasize that so we want to have this lovely light effect and when we do our clouds later we want to put all our highlights and we want to draw the viewer's eyes straight down that path and into where our sun is. So all we're going to do is we're going to use this middle shade just at the sides and we're going to put the lighter shade in the middle. So look, just a little bit darker. And remember, acrylic paints always dry a little bit darker. So if you are unsure, just always go on the lighter side and then you can always darken it up. And all we're going to do while the paint is wet, look, we're just going to blend the two tones together. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just blending it and you get a little seamless transition and it looks really realistic. And always remember your horizon, no matter what colour you do the sky, the horizon is always a lighter shade than the top. And by having darkened corners, what it does is it just makes the viewer's eyes go straight to the middle. So it's a little trick. Bob Ross is the expert at that, he taught me. So if you just use 
darken corners, uh, dark colors in the corners, and always use a lighter tone at the horizon. You can't go wrong. Okay, so we've made around the sun the lightest in tone. So we're gonna just take that middle tone, which was the combination of the two. And all we're gonna do, while the paint is wet, we're just gonna do the same trick as we did below. And we're just going to sort of merge the lighter tone into that middle tone. So blending is a really, really good thing to practice at any time. Because um, trying to get seamless transitions in your sky before you put things like the clouds over the top is a really, really good way to trick the viewer's eyes. So by just bridging the two tones together and then just adding a little bit more of the darker tone as you go further away from the sun you can trick people's eyes and it just makes the sky look a bit more seamless so as we get further away from the sun we want to get darker but around the sun we want to get lighter so what we're going to do look we're just going to use that really light tone and while it's wet we've got a really nice soft round headed brush all we're going to do is just blend it so as we go out we want to get darker so we want to add more of the um, royal blue and to our mix and we just want to get a little bit darker so look it's just a really easy trick so you can use things like a blender brush if anyone watches people like color by felix he's an expert at that and he uses really really good blending so all you have to do is just use quite a big brush i don't use particularly expensive brushes i don't have a make of brushes or anything i use i just like to use big cheap ones you can see in the pot next to me i don't really take care of all my brushes because obviously i paint all the time and i go through everything so what i tend to do is just buy a pack of sort of 10 round headed brushes and i just use them to block in and i find that the rounder of the head and the softer they are the easier it is to blend so blender brushes are fantastic for doing this so look, all we're doing we're just adding more of the blue to the mix and we're just getting darker as we move towards the corners so really easy rule of thumb as you move away from the sun as you move towards each corner you want to get a bit darker in tone so really really easy to do and don't worry if you have any little streaks like I do you could go back and you could re-blend it because we're doing just a beginner's tutorial today and obviously it's my first painting back and I'm a bit rusty I'm not going to do that today so all we're going to do is we're just going to darken up the corners with that royal blue and we should have a pretty seamless transition so when we put the clouds on the top it should match with our lovely light effect in the middle so we're gonna get some jet white some titanium white and we're just gonna block in the sun just cover up where we had that chalk and we've got a lovely center point for the viewers eyes to focus on so try when you create compositions like obviously this is just out of my imagination but try to have something that catches the viewers eyes so try to have a path or a sun or something like that that goes straight down the middle and you can focus the viewers eyes now we're going to get some white and some cobalt blue, a tiny bit of purple, so white, cobalt blue and purple, and a dab of black. So cobalt blue, some white, some purple, and a dab of black. And you should get this musty, sort of dark, sort of shadowy tone. So more blue and purple than anything with just some white and a dot of black. And what we're going to do, we're going to block in the shadows of our clouds. Now the reason we want to create quite a nice sort of... Um, light purple this pastel purple is we want to put highlights around our clouds so we need to create the illusion of sort of a rainy quite heavy um, dark shadow tone to create the highlights to give that that wow effect for our sun to stand out so what we're doing first we're just going to block in the shadow tone of our clouds first and then we can put the highlights on too now to add a little bit more darkness to it you can add a little bit more blue purple and a dot of black and you can just get a sort of a little bit darker the more black use you um add the more overpowering it is so only add a tiny bit of black and you should get this sort of dark purpley gray and all i'm doing is just at the base of the clouds because obviously that's facing away from the sun i'm just adding a little bit of a darker tone so i'm just blocking it in i'm just trying to create the shadows so just try to cover up all that burnt sienna if you, you're painting your canvas burnt sienna. If not on a white canvas, just try to create sort of a shape of a cloud. And we'll use that color just for all the shadows. 
Now while we've got that colour, we're going to just create some little floater clouds. So we're just going to have loads of little clouds that are coming down towards the horizon. So all I'm going to do, I'm just using my little brush. I'm just creating odd shapes. As I say, we're not going to do anything advanced today. I will, I do want to teach you how to paint realistic clouds and obviously create depths and things. But this is aimed at more beginners to mediums just because I'm so rusty because I'm back after six weeks and I have to sort of blow the cobwebs out. So all I'm doing is I'm just creating some clouds. I'm just using my brush. I'm just sort of scraping the paint onto the canvas. Just creating odd shapes. Just create loads of little shapes. And you can see now where that sort of purpley dark shade is. It just creates a nice contrast against the blue. But it doesn't stand out too much. Because we don't want it to be too overpowering. Because when we put the highlights on in a minute. We want it to really pop. So around here is going to be quite light because obviously that's going to get the most sun. So we're going to take some of that shadow colour and lots of the horizon colour, which was Carunian blue, um, cobalt blue and lots and lots of white. And we're going to create highlights. So all we're going to do is we're going to go around our two main clouds and create some highlights. And we're going to go round onto um, the highlighted areas. So we're going to think where the sun is going to touch these parts of the clouds. We're going to create just an outline and shapes just to really emphasize them. So it's still a light pastel whitey blue. It's not jet white yet. We're going to put this tone on first and we're just going to try to create some highlights. And these are all the clouds that are getting the boom in sunlight of that really low sun. So if you think of maybe this is about four or five o'clock in the evening and that sun's quite low, and it's sitting on the near the horizon it's creating that lovely sort of contrast and a bright sunny day so it's a really easy technique and what you can do is while you've got a smaller brush you can just sort of blend it into the previous tone if it's still wet just try to blend it in and what that does it just makes it look fluffy and softer and it just gives it a really nice effect. So just try to think where the sun would be shining on. So what it does is it tends to outline the nearest clouds because obviously it's behind those clouds and those clouds are getting a lovely sort of really sharp outline. And then it seems to go around and up against all the ones and they'll have some sides that are getting the highlight and some sides that are in the shadow. So hence the fact that's why we use that darkest purple. And as you see, it all, acrylics always dry a little bit darker. So any landscape, when you're planning it out, always go a bit lighter than you think. Because you can always darken areas up at the, at the last minute. But if you have it too dark, you'll bring it towards the viewer. So we still want to use very pastel tones. Because we don't want to bring those clouds right towards the viewer. We want to push them back so it looks like they're far off into the distance. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just trying to emphasize these clouds. Just outline them and just think where the, the sunlight is beaming around them. And just creating these lovely highlights. So it's a really easy trick. As I say, we're not going to go de super detailed or anything. But even these beginners tutorials, as I say, they're not like perfect. They're not like works of art, but they're really, really easy to do. And you can learn the basics. And then once you learn the basics, you can then, as I say, spend, we're doing this and say just over 45 minutes. You can spend, say, maybe one or two hours, have a reference photo, and you can use the same techniques with your reference photo to paint much more advanced and much more in detail. So that's all it is. So there we go. Look, it's already starting to take shape. It's already starting. And because we've got that lovely transition in the background sky, that's already trying to trick the eye where we've got the darkened corners it's already framing the piece now i'm just going to darken up the shadows so i'm going to get some purple black and cobalt blue and i'm going to make a really dark sort of bluey gray so i've got blue black purple and i'm just going to add a little bit of white just to suck a bit of the color out and just make it a bit lighter in tone so i've got this lovely purpley bluey gray and I'm just going to really emphasize some of the shadows on the bottom of this cloud. I want to make it look like a rain cloud. So if it's London, we have plenty of them. <laughs> like it is always peeing down here in, in London. It's always raining. Even in the summer, it's been a really wet summer. We've had lots of fantastic days of sunshine, but most days it has been raining. So what we're going to do, we're just going to use this color just to really darken it up. And we're going to still leave little gaps just so we've got some gaps and we're going to do some of the lower ones on the horizon they could be mean rain clouds that are soaking everyone and 
what we're going to do is just emphasize that just on the base of those clouds just so when we add the real highlights in a minute they really stand out because we need a dark tone now so we've got this lovely effect so we've got this darkened tone now so now we can put the highlights with our pure white so we've got some titanium white and this is going to really really emphasize everything so remember with acrylics because they always dry dark sometimes with your highlights you might have to add it twice so especially with white if you're painting on any surface it's going to pick up the background color so it's going to pick up that light blue so maybe just go around it and just give it a second coat so all we're going to do is swap to a small brush and we're just going to outline everything with titanium white and make everything look really prominent and electric so we're going to make the sunlight look like it's absolutely beaming so by just creating some odd little float of clouds and creating a lovely outline with some titanium white and let's say if you have to do it twice there's nothing wrong with that it's a really really easy technique just take your time and just outline some of these uh, lovely uh, clouds and where you've got that light blue you don't have to outline everyone what it does is it's sort of where you go into the light blue and you leave gaps it's got this lovely sort of seamless transition where you've got some shadows that are, um, some highlights excuse me that are extremely radiant and bright where the sun is beaming and beckoning around it and then you've got some that are just sort of catching the light and match that background sky so it's a really easy trick so look i'm just going over the same paint twice just to really emphasize it because as it dries it just dark, dries dark and I want those highlights to really pop so I just want to use the white sometimes twice so a really good rule of thumb is with your highlights you want to kind of leave your white to the last minute so you want to put on all your shadows put on your lightest highlights sort of light blues and any sort of lighter tones and then use your whites for the real radiant areas these are the areas that are getting the most sunlight and then what that does is just like the shadows by having a good contrast between the, the lights and the darks so i think of yin and yang it allows those highlights to really really pop and really emphasize the point and again draw the viewer's eyes to the middle so as i say there's no detail in this painting it's just colors we're not doing anything hard it's just using tones to trick the eye and as I say with all the tutorials as you get better at drawing as you get better at painting as I say when I'm not injured and I've um, hopefully come back what we'll start doing we'll start doing much longer tutorials much more hard and advanced tutorials for everyone but at the moment I'm just going to ease my way back so what we're going to do we're just going to put all this white so these are the areas that get in the sunlight all around that sun and because that white is so electric and so bright, it's really creating that really lovely light effect. So really easy to do. Fantastic painting for beginners. If anyone would like anything, um, uh, what's it called, to learn any scenes, please um, obviously leave them in the comments below or send me a DM at mstuartpaintings at um, Instagram. I'm always on my Instagram and you can, uh, what's it called, any scenes. I know someone asked for a desert the other day, so I'm gonna hopefully do a desert scene and do something different. So we're gonna try to include things. So anyone who's got any great ideas, please include them, because hopefully I can make them into tutorial. So we're gonna create a mountain now, and we're gonna have some trees. So we're gonna have some that are a little bit further back and in the distance, so they're gonna be smaller, and we're gonna have some a bit larger. So how do we create distance? Well, we create a bluey tone. Now the reason we use blue is because obviously the sky is blue in this picture so we're going to use some cobalt blue and some white and we're going to add a little bit of sap green and a tiny bit of black just a dot of black and we're going to create a nice sort of far away bluey greeny tone now the reason we're doing this sort of muted tone is if you ever look into the distance especially on a blue sunny day the mountains because they pick up that lovely radiant blue because they're far away by using a nice pastely dark blue what it does it just makes your mountains look far off and into the distance so it's an easy easy trick so just like we did with our whites we want to save our darkest tones to to be nearest to the viewer and bring things forward so we don't want to use anything like black or anything and really dark tones we want to make it more pastely blue 
and we want to push that area back so these are the mountains far off into the distance and by using this bluey tone so i'm just going to add some green some cobalt blue lots of white and a dot of black and we're just going to mix it up again just where my brush had lots of water it's a bit watery so i'm just going to mix it back up now that it's dry and all we're going to do look we're just going to create this lovely sort of pastel blue tone and as i say it will dry darker and all we're going to do is create a far off mountain range this could be sort of the hills this could be somewhere like scotland or somewhere or ireland and this could be the lovely hills the highlands off in the background and it just gives your painting a little bit more depth so by having something like a mountain range it just gives again something it just adds a little bit more detail so we're just going to add a little bit of white and a dot of green to that mix and a dot of blue but predominantly white just to make it a lighter tone and all i'm going to do with a tiny fine liner i'm just going to create a much lighter tone and i'm just going to just put some scrapes into the canvas just going diagonally and these just could be some ridges and using my finger just to blend it just to create a little bit of detail on the mountains just to make a highlight just so again it just looks like they've got some valleys and things in the far distance and it just makes it look less flat so just by doing that all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of detail but you can see now we're going to get darker as we move towards the viewer so we've got this lovely horizon and we've got this mountain range and we want to get darker in tone so now where we've saved our darkest darks we're going to start making them to bring the painting forward and to bring the viewer into the composition so we're going to get sap green and black and a little bit of cobalt blue so we're going to create a really dark bluey green and we're just going to darken up our corners so that this is going to be the nearest to the viewer so this tone is going to be the darkest in tone so we want to bring this grassy area of our sort of wild grass or flower field or whatever we're going to create we're going to create that by using a really dark tone and what that does look we're darkening up our corners again to emphasize the viewer's eyes to the middle and down that path and towards that sun and that mountain range so a bit also as we get lighter in tone so if we get some yellow and green and mix it together to make this olive green and just mix it into our mix so yellow and green a tiny bit of blue just to suck a bit of the color out we can push that back so just like we did with the mountains by using a little bit blue with our color and using some white and just making it a little bit um, lighter in tone so green yellow tiny bit of white and some blue we can push that grass further back so look easy peasy so just block it in don't worry if it's streaky we're going to paint some layers over it we're going to add some texture to it in a minute but it's just to block it in so we have the darkest area towards um, nearest to the viewer and the lightest area the further it goes back towards those mountains I'm just going to paint in the middle just create sort of a path look whoops and it's easy peasy so green and yellow to create this olive sort of tone add a little bit of cobalt blue just to suck a bit of the color out and make it a bit more purpley and just easy peasy now I'm just using a tiny bit of a lighter tone just around the top here I'm just going to blend it in see as you can see it dries a lot darker you see just it's not that much difference just a tiny bit dark, uh, lighter and all i'm going to do is just in that middle area i'm just going to make it a bit lighter just so it looks like it's getting the sunlight so again just like we did with our sky we want to create a nice gradient in the grass just so when we add all the detail on top it mixes together so if we get some green and some blue and some black and just mix it into that two tone so we've got two tones we're just going to bridge the two together so just like we did with the sky where we bridged the two tones where we had the darker tone and the lighter tone we're just going to do exactly the same thing really easy so we have a dark tone and a light tone and we just bridge the two together and we're just going to try to create a transition in our grass so all we're doing look tricks the eye we've got the darkest darks in the corner and we've got it going lighter as it goes further back and obviously it's getting a bit of that sunlight as it moves towards the sun easy peasy so i want to create a tree line so i want to push it back just like the mountains so we're going to take some sap green and cobalt blue to create a dark greeny blue 
get a tiny bit of white to it just to again suck the color out and make it a bit further back but we're going to have more blue than we have green and what that does just like the mountain range is going to push this tree off into the far distance now because they're very far away we don't want them to make them too big so what i'm going to do is just create lots of little trees on this far horizon and again just like the clouds just like the mountains what we're doing is think of like if we were building a house and we're laying the foundation first and then we're laying things like the stairs and we're building the doors and putting the windows in what we're trying to do is just by step by step we're just trying to make more things to make the painting look more realistic but as i say look there's no detail it's not hard it's just implying the shape of trees now we're going to have some more trees coming towards us so i'm just going to make them a little bit bigger same color combination but i'm just adding a little bit of black so cobalt blue green and a little bit of black so a little bit darker still a little bit of white just to make it not too dark and i'm just going to make some bigger trees and these could be just some nearer tree line so these are some trees that are just a tad nearer and that's why they're a bit darker in tone because they're coming towards the viewer and they're just a little bit nearer and they're just sort of approaching us and they're just merging off into the distance with that far trees. So there we go, easy peasy. So again, look, there's no detail. You can go back and forth and just imply just by having hardly any paint on your brush and just going around, you can just create some shapes just so they look a bit nicer. But it's really, really easy to do. It's not hard. It's just implying that there's some trees in the, in the foreground. So if we get some uh, cobalt blue, some black uh, a little bit of brown so cobalt blue black some brown and some sap green we're just going to make a really really dark tone so some more green let's just add a little bit more green so we've got this really really dark shadow tone that i've mixed up okay and we're going to swap to a fan brush so a fan brush is just a brush that looks like a fan and what we're going to do we're going to uh, load up both sides and all we're going to do is we're going to get our canvas and now we've got this lovely transition we're just going to use this dark tone in the corners so we're going to create grass so all i'm doing i'm just sort of tapping the canvas with this fan shaped brush and i'm switching it up diagonally and i'm going um, across with it and because it's got so many little bristles what it does it just creates the impressions of grass so what we're trying to do is create texture in our grass just to make it look more realistic so we're using a really dark tone just to bring the grass towards the viewer and all we're doing is we're just using this fan brush just to imply detail in our grass and just make it look more 3d so really really easy just let the brush do all the work you can buy a fan brush for literally a pound maybe a dollar you know dollar fifty they are so cheap you can get a pack of them with all different sizes now using that dark color what it does is it brings things really towards the viewer so we want to push things back so we want to get some green and some blue so some sap green and some cobalt blue and we create a little bit of white just to suck a bit of color out and we're just going to create a middle tone so it's still very bright it's a nice bright green but we're just going to create a middle tone and we're just going to blend between that really dark tone and this middle tone just to make the transition now we've got the background color underneath just like our sky we can just add this over the top and that background color will shine through the gaps and the transition will trick the viewer's eyes so really really easy as i say it's just another step in building towards the painting and then we're going to get some yellow and green which we made earlier which was that olive green and we're just going to mix that together and just create a little bit darker tones so olive green which is yellow and green and we're just going to start blending that in so we're getting lighter towards the sun if you think of it that way so we're getting lighter in tone as we move towards the sun because obviously the sun is super bright and we really want to emphasize that in our painting so all we're doing is we're just dabbing our fan brush just to create lots and lots of texture and just create the illusion of wild long grass so this could be a lovely country field somewhere 
I've been doing lots and lots of walking because I've been injured. I've been like Forrest Gump where I literally just walk and walk and walk or run. Well, I can't really run. So I've been walking just in the straight line everywhere. So I've been walking about 10 kilometers a day, which is about six miles a day. So I've actually lost a lot of weight thanks to my injury, <laughs> which is a really positive thing. So I've been going on lots of country walks. So this kind of inspired me to do a lovely sort of country landscape the other day. So we've got some sap green and cobalt blue, and we're just gonna add a little bit of that olive green, which was yellow and green to the mix. And we're just gonna create a sort of bridge tone, and we're just gonna sort of bridge again this so it's not too harsh between the really lights and the really darks. And we're just gonna leave gaps, and what that should do, just like the sky, it should create a nice transition. Now there's the subscribe, um, bell please if you haven't turned on the bell notification please do and hopefully now i'm back and we should be doing lots more tutorials every month it will notify you when there's a new tutorial by um when you press the bell logo and you'll get alerts every time i load a new video so thank you so much for everyone supporting the channel and thank you so much for everyone sending me lovely um nice get well soon um messages on instagram that really really cheer me up so thank you so much so we're going to take um, some yellow and green to make that olive green and we're just going to load up our fan brush and what we're going to do is we're going to create sort of the light sort of wildflowers off into the distance. So all I'm going to do, look, I'm just tapping the brush, I've got it all loaded up and I'm just leaving gaps and all we're going to do is these are going to sort of imply the heads of all these sort of wildflowers. So if you think of um, when you have these fields, you have loads of little sort of dandelions and sort of lovely sort of daisies and lots of wildflowers. So just by leaving the gaps and because we've created the texture already, just by adding again colors and tones, not detail, just colors and tones, we can trick the viewer's eyes and just make Again, just look like it's got texture and just make that it just looks more 3d and more realistic so really really easy so all I'm doing I've just got a loaded up brush I'm just dabbing it as I keep saying to you things like fan brushes and blenders brushes you don't have to be super skilled as an artist they do a lot of the work for you it's a bit like if uh, you need a proper screwdriver or a proper hammer or something it once you get the tool it really makes your life a lot easier so please invest in just um, some cheapy brushes but have the right kinds of brushes things like blender brushes fan brushes and stuff and it'll make your life a lot easier especially for painting things like grass and leaves and things fan brushes are fantastic so it's starting to take shape and all we're doing is as we come down towards the viewer we're just leaving bigger gaps so anyone who watched um, the tutorials on how to paint waves and you would get a bigger gap between the waves as you move towards the bottom of the painting which is the same kind of um, deal with this one what we're doing we're just leaving bigger gaps as we move downwards and all that should do is just create the illusion of more wild grass and because the the gaps are less as they move towards the tree line it just makes the um, the fields just look a bit more flatter and it just makes it look a bit more realistic so easy peasy trick as you come towards the bottom of the painting just leave a little bit more gaps of the under painting to shine through and it will just create the illusion that it's just a bit more realistic so easy peasy techniques just by flicking the brush and just leaving lots of the underpainting, we're creating lots of this sort of wild grass to make it look really nice and realistic. So just get adding a little bit more sap green and blue as we come towards the bottom of the painting. And the reason I'm doing that is just because this bit's a bit more in the shade. So just by adding a cooler tone in the uh, green and blue, we're just um, leaving big gaps now. Look, so we're leaving big gaps between lots of the underpainting to shine through and it just creates the illusion and I don't want to have too much of a bright color in the corners so what I'm doing I'm just smearing the paint off because I want to have a little bit of impression but I still want a nice dark corner especially on my left hand side because obviously that's where I'm going to sign it so just by doing this look we're just creating the illusion of all wild grass really easy to do and just leaving a big dark corner in your left side because that's where you can sign it. So we're going to take um, lots and lots of white and add a dot of yellow 
just to create this sort of um, really, really nice bright white yellow. And we're going to create the tops of the highlights. So again, just like um, our clouds, we've got this off white because it's got a bit of yellow in it. And we're just going to load up our fan brush and we're going to leave plenty of that um, underpainting to shine through with all the texture. But what we really want to do is we want to create some real, real pungent highlights because just like our clouds, these are all the bits that are going to get the sunlight. So we want to create really fantastic bright highlights so our landscape painting looks really, really, really bright. So with any landscape, what you want to do is you want to create a... Um, a landscape that someone can get lost in so it feels like they're actually in the painting so a great way to do that is to have things like a path or have as I say something like the Sun or something in the um, background that the viewer is looking towards so it feels like you're looking at this scene so a great way to think of compositions is to create things that the viewer can get lost into and that's why I paint things like sunsets and things. Everyone likes the beach. I don't know a person who doesn't like going and looking at the sea or listening to the waves. It's nice, relaxing. Being on holiday always cheers people up. So try to think of things that can get the viewer lost into that you would almost like be that you were walking down this path or walking in nature. So look, just like we did with the lighter um, olive green, we're just using this um, tone just to create big gaps now. So we're creating bigger gaps as we move towards the bottom of the painting, leaving lots of the underpainting. And we're just creating dots to create the illusion of wildflowers. So you get lots of these daisies, as I say, and daffodils and loads of lovely wildflowers when you have these sort of wild grass. And what we want to do is just create the tops of that and these could be all swinging in the breeze and they're all getting the highlights from that beautiful sun. So really, really easy. As I say, the more you move towards the bottom and the corners of the painting, just try to leave bigger gaps. And the more you move towards the horizon, you can just create more, more detail and just less gaps, just bringing it forward. There we go. Easy. No worries, there we go, perfect. And you can make it quite bright on the um, horizon because obviously that's going to be getting the most sunlight. So just as you walk, walk your way down towards the bottom of the path and in these corners we just want to have less and bigger gaps and these could be all these sort of wildflowers and long grass swaying in the breeze. Whoops. Made a big splat there. Never mind, there could be a, a clump. <laughs> could be a clump of wildflowers. Nothing licking your finger and just smearing it can't fix. <laughs> As I say, I, I'm glad to be back, but I'm not going to take it too seriously today. So that that clump can live. I don't mind that so much. So look, as we go down, just try to leave bigger gaps. And just add dots just to create these lovely highlights. And these could be all these lovely wildflowers. So depending where you live, think of places you can go to and um, take lots of reference photos and try to think of how to create lovely sort of scenes that people could get lost in. So anything like um, flowers, anything like beaches, um, temples or castles, anything like that, you can just think of where you can create really nice, pretty sort of places that people can escape to and that's the thing it, nice relaxing scenes really really help people so what we're gonna do we're gonna get some brown and we're gonna get some blue and we're gonna mix the two together I'm running that blue here so let's just stuff more blue in there so brown and blue and a little bit of white just to make it a little bit lighter so we've got some brown and blue and white and we're just gonna create a nice path now so all we're going to do is go create a dark tone just here at the bottom because obviously that bit's more in shade away from the sun. So just by using again just a little bit of blue in the mix it just makes it a little bit cooler in tone. Don't worry if you have any burnt sienna it's shining through it can make it look like bumps and terrain in the in the sort of the dirt. 
and then as we move towards the sun we're just gonna add a little bit more white to the mix and a little bit of blue so i'm running out of blue so i'm just gonna stuff some of that in <laughs> so we're gonna shove some more blue blue and white in and we're just gonna try and make it cooler in tones it's got less uh, brown in it and more blue and white a tiny bit of that yellow and white uh, there we go and we're just gonna blend it while it's drying we're just gonna again try to make it look like it's just a bit more terrain and that just fade off into the distance so we're just gonna have this nice sort of rough sort of muddy path this could be where a tractor's gone down through all the grass and just sort of made a nice muddy country path I'm just gonna smear that with my finger just to make it a bit more flat and I'm just gonna get some white and I'm just gonna really emphasize the highlights here just under the sun so just under the sun just like we did with the clouds this is area is going to get super amount of light so I'm just gonna get a load of white here and I'm just gonna emphasize the path and just make it look really really um, high contrast there's lots and lots of highlights and lots and lots of white beaming down onto that path and onto our flowers Sorry, I keep getting up because my back hurts still, so excuse me if I keep jumping up and down in my seat. So we're going to get some black and some sap green. So I'm going to create a really, really dark green. So black and dark green. A little bit of blue. So we've got really, really dark shadow tone. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a little ridge just to make the path look a little bit less flat. So I'm just going to go up and this could just be a bit of shadow where the grass is sort of not getting any light because it's long and it just makes the path look a bit more 3D. So just be using a darker tone just in and around the, the, the path. I'm just trying to make it look a bit less flat. Because I'm doing this from my imagination, sometimes with your imagination, you can um, your work can look a bit flat. I've noticed that, especially with me. Um, hence the fact it's much easier to use reference photos. Because if you're using reference photos, you can see exactly how the light works and how the um, shadows work. So sometimes when you're doing things like these little quick tutorials for you guys, sometimes your work can look a little bit flat like this path but you can just use darker tones just around the area just to create a bit more tech um, terrain on it just a bit more technique and if you make it um, if you get some of the lighter green that we use that olive green and some of that white you can always put back in your flowers just so it's not too overbearing so there we go easy peasy and it just makes the um, path look a bit more texturized bit more like he's got some muddy footprints or some tractor trails in it so as I say if you have a reference photo you can always go back and forth and you can always do every blade of grass every bit of tree but today because I'm just trying to ease my way in I just want to teach you more about how light works and how tones work and then as I say you can build up the detail so we really want to emphasize all the highlights here because obviously that's going to get the beam in sunlight so by again just saving our bright titanium white to the very end we can just really emphasize under that sun so I'm just gonna get some titanium white I'm just going to really try to make this area look like it's almost beaming with sunlight just where all that sunlight is just beaming out down the middle and again what it does is it just draws the viewers eyes to the end of that path and to that sun now why I've got a light color I'm going to get some of that olive um, green that we mix which was yellow and green and I'm just going to highlight some of the trees in the middle I'm going to still leave plenty of gaps now the reason I'm highlighting the ones in the middle is because again they're getting that sunlight so just going over the top again because as I keep saying to you white dries and it absorbs the um, color that's underneath so by just going over the top look with just a second layer of white now your painting is dry to emphasize the highlights on your cloud you can really make them look much more uh, electric and much more stand out just to make those highlights really pop and to make them look fantastic 
So that's looking really, really cool. I'm just gonna emphasize this bit here, just so it looks super bright. So that's looking awesome. I think I wanna put just a little bit of highlights on our mountain. So we're gonna get some of the sky color, which was Carunian blue, um, the cobalt blue, and some white. So Carunian blue, cobalt blue, and lots and lots of white. We're gonna add a tiny bit of purple to it. And we're just gonna put some highlights in the middle, just because these valleys, these parts of the mountains are getting all the sunlight because obviously the sun is directly between those two clouds. So again, just gradually blending it into that lovely color we had already. I'm gonna just make my path look a bit nicer. But just by doing a little bit of highlight on the mountains in the distance, again, it just tricks the eye and just makes it look more realistic and just matches the light. And I'm gonna get some black and green and I'm just gonna make some of the shadows in our foliage, in our trees, look a bit more harsh, just to make them look more 3D. So just by getting some black and green and just leaving some dark shadows. And I'm just gonna make the horizon a little bit straighter because it's a bit wonky. As I say, I think I'm a bit wonky with my spine at the moment, my back. <laughs> so I think my painting's reflecting that and it's becoming a bit wonky. So I'm just trying to make the horizon a little bit straighter. And just put some of that white back just to make it look really pretty. So to make it look really, really like the sun is beaming down on that pathway. It's like that Beatles song, isn't it? The long and winding road. Dun, dun. <laughs> and then just again, I'm just highlighting some yellow and green just in the middle because that's where all that sunlight's beaming through. So as I say, we're trying to match everything. So if we match the sky, we want to match that with the trees. We want to match that with the mountain. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put an even brighter highlight. I'm just going to use lots of white, cerulean blue and cobalt blue in the middle. I'm just going to smear it and I'm just going to make that mountain look like it's getting all that sunlight. So all it does, it matches the sun above and it just makes it look more prominent. And again, it just draws the viewer's eyes to the middle. So I think that is starting to look fantastic. And if we just gently blend it into the darker tone either side, there we go. A amazing acrylic landscape painting for all you guys. I'm really, really glad I'm back. So I'm really happy we've painted this together. It's a lovely easy scene, as I say, there's no detail, it's all in the colours. So I think that's great for a first attempt back. So thank you so much guys for watching, thank you so much for all the messages of support. As I say, I feel a lot better, my back is a lot better. So thank you so much everyone, and thank you for supporting this channel, and like and subscribe if you haven't already. So take care, I'm Murray, and we'll see you soon for a new landscape painting. See you, bye!